James, thank you so much for joining me today on the Tiny Sessions podcast. No, thank you for having us. Cheers. Oh, Cheers. Thank you. It's lovely to have you. For anyone who hasn't heard about you guys um, or hasn't seen your space that you uh, live in and stay in, could you just tell us a little bit about yourselves and your backgrounds? Yes. So um, we've been together eight and a half years now and we've lived in multiple spaces so we've lived in uh, an apartment we've lived in a two-bed like cottage terrace and then lockdown hit um, and we just knew we wanted to be outside more and sort of it completely changed our perspective on what's important to us so we looked at getting a camper van and then this year we just took the leap of faith really and was just like should we just move into the van with two dogs um and yeah so that's what we've basically done so I was trying to think what else we could say what else what else are we about I guess I work in for Quirky Campers cool um, and we've just launched Diversify UK uh, Van Life UK um and yeah I'm loving life at the moment living in a van and writing about camper vans so that sounds like the dream <laughs> I, I bet there's lots of people listening right now being like wow I want that to be me <laughs> yeah it's pretty dreamy mm. yeah it's, it's great for Lauren because she can work remotely yeah. whereas I'm, I work for a framing company I've okay, spoke cool. framing. so all sorts of different artwork however I still have a place that I need to go in and produce these so traveling is limited to a lot of holidays a lot of weekends yeah sure around here there's loads of lovely spots that's so. so cool so you can travel local and I guess you never know like with your woodworking skills there are people who set up almost like mobile workshops um and things like that so you know, it might be like a clever way that you can have like a little pulley out system um and you've got uh, your little yeah. toolbox and then you can set up a bench so there's all sorts of things that you might be able to do which is really really cool um is your van called Big Blue? yes <laughs> love yeah. it love it yeah not very uh <laughs> it's big and it's blue but my <laughs> argument was that the sea is big and blue and the sky is big and blue so i try and make it deeper like the name like a deeper meaning but in reality it's just because it's a big blue van well yeah. i think that's good enough sometimes i think that's <laughs> <Yeah>. great <laughs> um how did you guys meet did you always want to do like the sort of van style where did you meet at uni or was it something that you were always really passionate about, like venturing off in a, like a little camper van and things once you started meeting? Yeah, I mean, I I think you started adventuring a little more mm. after we got together. I used to do a lot of camping, um, love, love getting outdoors, really. Oh. Uh, however, we went through a couple of tents and uh, sort of each season, Lauren was like, let's get a slightly bigger one, a bit more space. Nice. We got two dogs bit more space and then had the like dream of having a van for so long and Lauren really encouraged me to bite the bullet and uh, have a crack at renovating one yeah it was good yeah we met when we met eight years ago I was completely different I was working and living inside a pub uh James was friends with the owner's son um and I saw him come in and immediately was like wow <laughs> yeah that, him. He, he's very nice he, him. <laughs> um so I rang my mum and said I'm not coming home I'm, I was at uni in, in the place where James is from down south and oh, cool. it seemed like my final year was coming up but I was like mum I'm not coming home I've met somebody <laughs> and then that was it really but I'd say we've definitely like James has always been the adventurous type I used to be more adventurous and then throughout school um became more interested in like the material things and stuff like that yeah and then when I met James it just sort of ignited reignited like, that passion of, yeah to getting out and stuff and I think as we've grown as a couple like definitely ah great ways to get out and about and especially with the dogs and stuff like that so yeah it sort of brought that back for you which is great and it's so yeah. good being outdoors as well I love that I'm really glad that that's like come back for you because it's it's such a good feeling as well I bet 100% 100%. that's, really cool. that's so cool can you describe to me um big blues like layout to us to the people listening 
yeah i can send a video after this which is a tour at the moment it's yeah. not very uh to- like it's not in <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but it's yeah so we've got our little kitchen area um which is just beautiful we've got like little things like the colorful tiles and then we've got a wall where the um bulkhead was um and it's very it's like a mesh of our personalities i'd say um there's like a mix like usually you might have whitewashed or bohemian or like all these different but we've like sort of meshed all these styles together um to sort of like create a loud personality for big blue i Um, like that yeah so the the layout it was we did have it different when we were traveling in it and then when we were going to live in it james spent months revamping it um so we just wanted it to be more social for us but also with two dogs that are going to be in it all the time like good for them as well yeah we needed a lot of floor space and things so we didn't get a shower which i'm still sad about (laughs) um because we had to make room for the dogs, which ah, oh, yeah, definitely. Did you get round the shower idea? How how do? Because sometimes people choose not to have a shower for whatever reason. Mm. But did you decide to go for like a little pop up shower or a portable shower or a different option? We had the camping shower for a while. Yeah, the, uh, the classic old like big black sack you just leave in the yeah. summer. Yeah. How about awesome. lukewarm and then you just hose yourself off, um, and that's pretty handy. Uh, but generally, um, where we are now is a nice shower nearby. No. Um, so sort of take any opportunity to uh, freshen up. Go. Uh, <laughs> little in-house sponge bath. Yeah, we've got a lot of friends and we're like, can we use your shower? And they're like, yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> can, we can we use your washing machine? Yeah, of course. Oh, um, that, yeah, that's the way round it. I like that I like that whereabouts are you guys at the moment do you stay on a site or do you stay just in the world or at like friends places so we stay pretty local don't we for your work yeah yeah, yeah. we're on a, a lovely little farm at the moment oh, um yeah it's, uh, like I say we move around here a little bit yeah um there are some like gorgeous little free spots that you can uh have a sly little kip in but um yeah, just because of my work at the moment. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I think if you've got the farm as well um, and you can stay on the farm, I've heard that a lot with people who are in vans that they sort of build a relationship with the farm owner. And that seems to be a way of like making that work. Like you say, if you've got to be local for work and things like that, but you've still got a base. Yeah, yeah. it is really good. And we can we we do tend to like um like nip off site quite a lot um so we're ra- rarely here like we'll go yeah. and stay at um james's parents in hailing island or we'll take advantage of like going to stay on like a friend's driveway to like you know so that we can see them like it's we usually like go away especially at the weekends as well oh i love that loads of weekend fun trips yeah i definitely. love that <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> Yeah, it's good having the base though, because I think that was one of the things for me when we still had um, our little house. Yeah. The idea of moving into a van and not having like a full back base, even just that like tiny bit of security that there's always going to be a spot in one in one place. Yeah, um, sure. So as soon as, as soon as that was found, we were just like, yeah, let's go for it. Oh, I love that. It's just doing it, isn't it? 100 percent taking the leap of faith that's it and just going for it and like you guys are then really happy for it as well and that's what it's about as well isn't it i mean it's been over six months no it's been over seven months and the time has gone so quickly like i cannot even tell you we've lived in a van like Mm. over half a year and it's like i can't imagine going back to a house now like i'm trying to tempt james into getting a bus like let's get a bus (laughs) Yeah, James, you have the skills to be able like, to convert the bus. It's a big project. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive bus. bus. I love it. Well, it seems like the roles are reversed, and now James has to say yes to things. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say no now that, that Lauren's actually going, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh I'm just like, right, what's next? Yeah, always <laughs> think of the next project. <laughs> I love that. Um, with Van 
van life communities it's an amazing community and I know that you've mentioned that you've become part of quirky campus which for people who don't know about them um could you just tell us a little bit about them so quirky campus might just be the coolest company in the whole world um it's a hub for all things camper vans so sales um hire you can buy resources so we've got our ebook um on building a camper van um a, p- a lot of people use it the site for inspiration um so it's just basically everything everything that you can think of converters oh, yeah. we've got a list of converters so you can basically if you're thinking of hiring a camper van for you're not sure if van life's for you go to quirky campers if you're thinking of actually buying a van you can get it professionally converted um or you can just buy um like a shell of a van to do it yourself um or you can buy one already done yeah I love that I love that there's the the buy section on there and it's great yeah. for people who like for example with your van and then you might want to get like a bus or whatever later on you've got a place where you can go that's like you know that you've got the right audience going to it mm. to sell instead of just putting it up on Facebook marketplace and eBay and a sign on the window um, and things like that it's I think it's great what they do um, and you also mentioned about diversify van life which I know about but I would love for the listeners to just hear a little bit about that as well yeah so diversify van life um it's sort of been in the works behind the scenes with um my manager Lindsay the owner of Quirky Campers for a year now and then I joined in April and we started discussing it and we we realized that we were both so passionate about it along with our colleague Lindsay as well who's our social media manager and we teamed up with Diversify Van Life in the US um, to bring to to bring Diversify Van Life UK which is showcasing basically any minority groups that you may not see um, on your Instagram feed I, I think I'm not the first person to say that usually when you go on the Instagram feed you may not see um, all different types represented represented basically you yeah. see like the same kind of person over yeah. and over experiencing van life so I think for anyone that's in a marginalized group it was quite difficult to find anyone to relate to yeah um and it did like I know when I was joining van life it had me questioning like should I be a part of van life because I'm I'm not very skinny I don't have blonde hair I'm not like this is not who I am like and I couldn't see myself being represented like represented so basically we launched Diversified Van Life UK with a passion to bring those people um, and give them a stage to be celebrated and heard and it's just it's doing so well like it's week two and we just have the most beautiful community already. I love that. I love that. I saw I saw the um, the Instagram page that came up as well um, about it. And I just think it's something that I'm glad is happening now. And it should have happened a while ago, a long, long time ago, especially like, for example, when you're saying like you were wondering if you should do van life. Um, and it's it's almost like that stereotyping, isn't it? But because you haven't got like yourself or other people or other backgrounds to be able to look at and see oh yeah they're doing that oh it's fine it's it's normal because it is the norm um and and you shouldn't have to sort of worry about that but do you think that those like feelings like occurred for a reason do you think that that's something that's just always been about um and it's really nice that it's now finally changing I think yeah I think people it was it's quite easy for when campaigns like for example black lives matter and things like that when something's shoved in the press i think it's quite easy for everybody to definitely voice their opinion and, and shout about it but then i do think that it does it does then it's like black history month a lot of companies will then celebrate black history month and they'll change their logos and they'll show their support but then after the month has gone and that sort of disappears so i think there's been diversified van life uk it's important that i think to have a permanent platform to celebrate these people that's uh, Um, having that permanent base isn't it yeah so i do think the feelings have been about for a long time but i just don't think 
I think that people from a privileged position haven't known how to support or haven't educated themselves, whether that's naively or, um, and it's sort of an issue that's been ignored, um, where I think now we're here to educate basically and say like, look, you can do something about this and you are able to make a difference and make a change and support um, all these different groups um, and yeah, and make it make a difference basically definitely definitely it's so important and it's really sad that you felt like you couldn't be included is that something that both of you felt as a couple or was it more so one than the other definitely more Lauren yeah um it's yeah far easier for me to just like go on Instagram and then just see some other guy knocking out a van yeah. And I, it, had, it didn't even cross my mind because I was no. looking up like tutorials and everything on YouTube. And it mm. wasn't until Lauren mentioned that um, the lack of diversity there, it had yeah. just hadn't even occurred to me. So it's yeah. quite like. And I think that, like, that kind of thing, like, I don't think it's something that is necessarily, like, without it sort of being brought to you it would be something that you would realize or yeah. you would think about and I think that's why this group and Diversify Van Life and any other um, platform like Peaks of Colour they're a walking group and Black Girls Hike any yeah. group like that they bring that to you um, and it's there in your face and you're able to see that look there is ch a change that's needed that's when uh, things beautiful things actually start to happen. Definitely. And I think, like you say, it's so important to have that platform that's not just there for campaign or for moment. Although those things are great and they help in a sense, but having something that's like permanent. Um, I know for me, when I put out a reach out for when I first did the podcast earlier this year in like June, July, I was asking for guests and it crazily and very luckily got booked out really quickly um, to years ahead. But I realised that the people reaching out wasn't everyone from a different background or minority. And I was like, that's not what the podcast is about. The podcast is about letting you be inspired and see everyone from no matter what background you're in, your country, your ethnic minority, whatever it is, it's everyone, families, age, single people, guys, girls, couples, um, everybody. And I think it's, it's something that is great that these like groups are getting really passionate about making sure that's more of a permanent base as well and also interesting to be able to have these conversations like for yourself James like saying that it's something that you noticed recently that when you're looking at YouTube videos and things like that that's what you're seeing um and all these people are out there um and it's almost trying to I know for me it's trying to find those people because yeah. they want to they want to have conversations, they want to chat, they want to chat about their van um, and things like that and their spaces or their cabins that they're building. Um, but for some reason, you guys haven't felt very like able to be able to go, oh yeah, that's me, I do that or I want to do that. So I'm really glad to be able to have this platform, but I'm so glad that there's people who are doing those permanent platforms now. Absolutely. Does it make you feel more reassured as well that like things are changing? I think it does. Um, I think it from both aspects, I think it, it speaks volume for anybody that's not supporting and it yeah, it and that's obviously sad and can be triggering at times. Um, but it also is very beautiful to to see the support. Um, so I guess it's from both aspects, and I think there's so much work to do to be done, and I think um we've definitely got a long way to go and it will go on um I think for generations but I do it does make me feel so excited and so warm having diversified van life and having just the people that is like have come forward and that are now part of our community like it honestly I think it was only the other day we were saying like it honestly brought like tears to my eyes just seeing all these beautiful people that I've never seen before because for some reason they're like being hidden like and it's just like where where have you come from like you're incredible 
um yeah it's like it's amazing people like people have so many different ideas and like things that they can bring to the table you know like with your skills with your work and James with your like woodwork and things like that and I just think like everyone should be spoken to and chatted to and they should just feel that they can like reach out to people as well and I did I did notice it especially when I did my reach out for the the podcast and I'm booked out of guests to 2024 and I'm thinking you're all from different countries but I haven't got everyone that I want so I know yeah. even after 2024 I'm still like I'm so excited to be able to like find more people and sometimes I find people like yourselves recently and I go yes <laughs> and I'm like let me yeah. find where I can get you in and squeeze you in and if I can't do it straight away and it and and say it is 24 because I've gone and said yes to all these people it's not because I don't want to have everyone um, yeah, and this is yeah. something that I can do for a long long time so it's it's nice almost I felt guilty at first because I thought oh no I've said yes to all these people because I was thinking yeah. I want all these different spaces and when someone says oh I want to be on your podcast you don't want to say no yeah so I was making sure I had different spaces each time people from different countries um couples and things like that and single and solo people and then I was like oh hang on a minute this isn't everyone that I want though so it's definitely there but I think sometimes people feel feel guilty that they haven't done it straight away but do you think that as long as people are making that change in whatever way and it's in their future goal and it's happening and starting that is just as good I do I do I think I think in terms of action I think it's it's always good I think there's loads of different things that you can do there's um so one is educating yourself as well um yeah. supporting shouting out these people um giving them a stage to be heard and I think so for example with a podcast like you're giving them a stage to share their voice and share their life experiences which is absolutely beautiful if that's not possible due to it being pre books then it's like all about the different things that you can do whilst this is happening so okay so I can spend the time educating myself I can spend the time like reading this reading that and everyone's making a different in different ways and I think there's many different ways to make a change um so as long as people are doing like what they can then that's what definitely definitely it's so good to know that because some people might want to do something but they might not have the platform so even if they're just privately educating themselves that Mm. in itself is just as valuable I know recently I shared loads of people's beautiful spaces from all different backgrounds and it was so lovely to me because it's like for me it's like Pinterest like finding all these spaces and all these different people and getting to meet wonderful people but I'm lucky that I've got the platform that I can put those up and I can share those but me doing that is so that everyone else can see themselves as well I think Um, it's so important to go oh my gosh they're doing that and if you've had feelings when you were younger as well it means that those people who are that younger age can see it and know that they can do it now as well which I think is important and recently I saw that um you had a sort of social media detox I don't know if it was just yourself Lauren or if it was both of you but I would love to know what made um you decide to have that detox and if it really helped take that time out as a like a couple yeah no definitely I think predominantly I'm the one on my on a yacht so like posting on there and sometimes it does feel uh, quite pressurised. James, you're more, you're less on about the social media, aren't you? You like taking, you, he's, the pictures. Full of, full of photos. The photos. You do the photos, the gorgeous the photos. photos. Yeah. But, yeah, I never, never end up putting them anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but you do the photos, like if someone was to look at my Instagram feed, right. a lot of those photos are taken by you. From oh. you. So that's how we sort of work as a team. James yeah. is like, <laughs> and then I write yeah. something. <laughs> yeah oh I like it so really you both do the social media basically we both do so I guess we did both take a little bit of a break um I think it's it's really important I think I've been quite open on my social media like I have suffered with anxiety depression and um I do have ADHD and I think at times it can become quite consuming um especially if 
multiple of those are heightened um and I'll find myself getting easily distracted or feeling pressured or ignoring messages um and I'll just find myself in sort of a whirlwind of emotion never really being able to shut off yeah um massive procrastinator uh if I'm feeling like that in my personal life especially if I'm busy within work I do that in so like in my personal life I could I found myself like oh I should be posting to Instagram but not really wanting to so I was like I, I really need to just take a break <laughs> I, like this is it now I just need to take some time off um so I in that time I went up north and saw my family and saw my oh. friends spent time with James spent time cuddling dogs and oh. yeah felt much much better for it oh that's so good to hear. did you feel that where you were getting like where it was getting too overwhelming did you notice James that like it was sort of not affecting the relationship but you just knew that like Lauren wasn't quite happy in herself as such and then by the time that you had had that chance to have a social detox did you just both just feel more like I guess did you feel more yourself Lauren and you just felt more relaxed and sort of recharged did you notice that James as well yeah yeah I think so um I'm sure you've done it before as well yeah. and sometimes it is just about that uh almost cliche of reconnecting with nature like yeah. actually being present when you're out on an adventure and not having to think I mean that's a gorgeous view but where's going to be the best shot or yeah. something something like that yeah you always feel like you're doing it for the sake of Instagram and then yeah. you forget actually those photos are what you can have for yourselves and print off and put them yeah. like an That's album right. and, and you forget that because you think or or people get uh worried about like what time to put on their social media and and it's always changing and it comes it can become very consuming so it's nice for you guys to just have that recharge I guess if some people like yourself Lauren with the blog and things like that if people in that industry where they are online I think it's important to know like people can just take like you were saying, James, like a little recharge moment and almost like a little holiday. I call it like a little detox and just having yeah. that little switch off as well. I think you can do that job, but you can still have those little breaks. Say, for example, if it's at the weekend or something like that. Yeah, I think it's important. It's something I've looked at doing like weekends off Instagram, like completely. Um, and I think it is a, re a really good idea. I think it does get to the point where uh, you do feel quite uh, consumed. And I think you start to put Instagram above yourself. Yeah. Uh, so you're more focused on that. And it's like Instagram shouldn't be, how can you put up Instagram before your like, mental well-being? That's yeah. crazy. When you say it out loud, like that sounds absolutely crazy. But like James said, like if you're looking at a beautiful view and you're, thinking oh where's the best shot for Instagram it's like no where's the best shot like for you like where yeah. can you sit and enjoy this um without any cameras or anything like that so definitely it's just sort of stripping it back isn't it I know that you said them um, you've got um ADHD and you've had sort of mental health um elements and things like that um do you find that there's ways that have helped you for living with those elements um, that make it easier for you? Yeah, I think there's like a number of things. Dogs, yes, massively. Dogs. I mean, my dog currently is um, currently here. Oh, oh, <laughs> so to be <laughs> so, um, Amazing eye <laughs> yeah, So dogs, but also, yeah, so I've... I think it's really difficult because anybody that suffers with sort of like anxiety and depression and then has ADHD will understand that you you find multiple ways to help with anxiety, for example. So one of mine is knitting. Love it. Amazing. But the ADHD in me will get really passionate about it for yeah. all of like a week or two and then not at all. Yeah. And so it's I, like that oh, up and then it's down. like switch off down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like my ADHD is really impulsive and I'll be like right okay I'm gonna go out I'm gonna get like eight balls of wool I'm gonna sit here I'm gonna get new knitting needles I'm gonna sit here I'm gonna knit a scarf I'm still to complete a scarf <laughs> because me too <laughs> because my ADHD with my anxiety is just not a good mix it's just like 
it, you have to be I think my mum has said previously that ADHD can be your superpower so when yeah. you find something that you truly truly love so mine is writing and I suppose I write on my Instagram captions but I'm writing a book currently and I haven't been to it this year which is so bad oh no I think I did earlier this year mm-hmm. Yeah, I did earlier this year. Words. Yeah, I wrote 5,000 words. Yeah, I did. That's amazing. Yeah. I wish I could write 5,000 words. <laughs> that was yeah. just this year. That was just this year. So, yeah. So, book coming out. That's a spoiler. Um, oh, but, funny. yeah. So, I think when you find something you're truly passionate about, you do become obsessed with it. And your ADHD does become your superpower in that sense because it does keep you going with it. Yes. Um, with the things that you truly are passionate about inside. But there is things that I will impulsively pick up um, that I do find help at the time um, another one would be reading has always stayed as a massive love love to me and it's the only way that I find my mind can truly escape and not yeah. have anything in it and like an example yesterday is what like James said walking so yeah, yesterday I had back outdoors exactly I had some bad news yesterday and I didn't feel very good and then my initial thought was to say, right, that's it, pull, I'm just going to work from bed, have the laptop in bed and just sit there and sort of vegetate until James gets home and see if yeah. he'll make me dinner. <laughs> 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 but, but I decided to get up, like go out, take the dogs out and we had the best time and I felt so much more like relaxed after that. I love that. It's that whole thing of like getting back out in nature and um, and just having that like it's the, it's that classic thing isn't it it just it just calms you and just lets you sort of reflect as well I'm guessing James like you have the same thing like that's probably why you like being outdoors as well and just stripping everything back oh for sure yeah I love so, that yeah um, it's been like a long week so yesterday rather than cooking doors I just cooked a uh, whole dinner outside on the open fire <laughs> I saw that for people who haven't seen it yet was it a cauliflower was it a curry yeah so I did some did like some bombo potatoes and then, a, and then a cauliflower and just roasted them on the fire uh, and then just did like a lentil not lentil a chickpea curry I love that oh yum <laughs> yummy it was, honestly it's so lush and to look outside like when James has a fire I'll often let him just like chill have an evening by himself to like unwind so I just yeah. look outside and he's just sitting by the fire with some nice music oh, on got food going. <laughs> and you're just in your element aren't you oh yeah oh uh, yeah. that's like your happy place isn't it for sure I can understand that I, I think whenever anyone finds that little moment and everyone should find it at least once a day like it's it's so good it's yes. like the best chocolate, I think. <laughs> um, as a couple, um, you guys, obviously, you said that you've lived in an apartment and in the cottage um, and you're living in a van. So you're living in a tiny space. Um, how do you guys make it work? Are there ups and downs? Are there arguments? Are there happy moments? And obviously, Lauren, you've explained to us about with your ADHD and anxiety. Um, how do you guys make it work for yourselves? just have to be understanding yeah. you, know, you know you go in, into it with the mindset of this is a small space yeah. we are going to be moving around with each other we've got two dogs to think about yeah uh, so utilizing every little bit of space it still does sometimes get a tad overwhelming because it's small you put down three items and it looks like the kitchen's getting cluttered yeah so yeah stay on top of a uh, clearing up um and a lot of it is not like a a quick quick fix I suppose you've yeah. got every time you're going into a cupboard everything's stacked uh I mean I do it like Tetris so uh, if I want something <laughs> like that, it's uh, a little bit of uh, it is oh sorry that's, that's all right <laughs> oh so it's all stacked up so you guys have got to try and if you want the thing at the back you've got to take everything out yeah, oh, yeah. it's it's absolutely crazy but <laughs> I think like, uh, sorry, I don't right. But I, I seen someone spotted, outside. Yeah, I think they have spotted another dog outside. Here's you Indy. Okay with him. Oh, Hindi's lovely as well. <laughs> so you've got Indiana a Labrador Bones. and a Spaniel. Yes, a Labrador ah. and a Spaniel. So we've got Indiana Bones and Demba. Oh. Lovely. Um, yeah, they are 
lovely, but they are very noisy. Um, yeah. I think as a as a couple, we we just get on. Like, of course, there is. I'm not going to say it's all dreamy. We do have arguments. We do bicker, but we get on so so well. Um, and we'll often. I just feel like being in the van. We've just. I do think we've adapted really really well, and we get on. We just, we'll just laugh. Like if anyone was like looking at our van, they'll just see us laughing quite a lot. Ah, that's brilliant. Laugh, laughing about anything. So it has, and also being able to get outside more and travel and see all these new places. I think it it is great as a couple to experience that. Oh, sure. 100%. Definitely. And like you said, James, it's just about like being understanding yeah. and listening to each other and sort of, respecting people's space and things like that and I guess that comes with you know you guys have been together for quite a number of years but if you can do that from the start uh it helps doesn't it it does definitely well it's just like it's like him being outside with the fire yesterday yeah he he, it was his like a long time it was his I I was in here watching my show he was out there listening to music and being by the fire and it's it's all about like just because you're in a small space you don't have to do everything together and I think that's yeah. when it could be really overwhelming yeah um, sure that's probably a tip for people if if it is becoming overwhelming for them um that those doing those sort of things yeah would help relieve that as well because I think sometimes uh, people might maybe get into like a slight rut and be like oh how do we how do we figure this out especially if they're new at living in a van as well so I think that's a really, really cool tip. And your lovely dog. So you've got, did you have your dogs before you got the van? Yes. Amazing. Um, how have you found um, sort of having your dogs with you? Obviously you wouldn't get rid of them, but how have you yeah. found having them with you? Um, and if there's any tips that you could give people that have made it easier. So for example, you said like, not having a shower so that there was more space within the build for the dogs um do they have a space where they sleep or do they sleep in the bed with you or well there's a bit they've got a bed that comes in so yeah take a bed out of the cab and pop it on the floor and then this permanent seating that lauren's currently on is where one of where the cock spaniel tends to sleep the smaller dog goes for the yeah (laughs) whereas the big 35 kilogram dog um throws tantrums if he's not in the bed so he's currently sleeping in the bed (laughs) first but now he stamps his feet and cries um hours it's winter so it's like a whole wants to be cozy (laughs) yeah we'll accept it for the winter but i think it's something we're definitely gonna drain drain out by uh, a summer Um, (laughs) but it is like they are they have a very interesting relationship anyways we got indy from a puppy and denver we um got when he was seven uh he was my sister's dog and she decided that you know she she couldn't handle having a dog anymore um so she asked us and we of course said yes um so we took him in and at first they used to fight uh, well indy wouldn't fight denver would <laughs> fight and indy would just go oh! um, <laughs> and then so we let them work it out and they have worked it out but like brothers they do have arguments now and again and I think a minute ago, they were just cuddling each other and kissing each other. But then also Denver, especially with this seat, will sit there sometimes and rumble. <laughs> as Indy comes in. um, so it's sort of like guarding the space. I think tips would be... Towels. Towels, definitely. Before right. the dogs come back in. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100% yeah, yeah. otherwise you're just gonna your whole van is just gonna smell of wet dog and <laughs> your whole van's gonna be wet I was so. gonna say how do you stop the smell of wet dog because all dogs have that smell so yeah. is it drying them before they come into the van is the first thing to make sure that you do yeah can't always be done though if it's hammering down no. with rain outside yeah. They're in. <laughs> yeah the floor's you know just gonna be yeah. damp for a bit until everyone's dried off and then you can yeah. clean it yeah um, we have blankets that are specific for dogs that will then go in the wash. Um, yeah. So, and we have incense burning. We love incense anyway. So once yeah. that's burning, it's absolutely 
yeah it's absolutely fine just you've just got to make sure like like, yeah designated dog blankets yeah keep them on the floor obviously when they're going don't let them on the seats definitely don't let them on the bed which is where Indy loves to like jump out (laughs) the lovely bedding sounds lovely of dog (laughs) not have light bedding um a massive other tip would probably be the dog gate um Uh, we got this tip from slow days um uh, She's a wonderful illustrator who's also living in a van with a dog. And yeah, it's a dog gate that basically is attached to the side of the van. It goes across the door. So the dogs, you can still have the dog door open and let all the sun in when it's summer and stuff, but the dogs can't jump out. I see. Uh, so they'll sit there and watch there. So it's really, really good. Um, any other tips, love, that you'd like to share? You're like the dog master. The <laughs> dog master. Um, <laughs> Just have, have everything to hand. So, you know, we've got a couple of hooks by the door, which is like, like your leads and harness. It's all bag. in one place. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, the, the easier it is to find, the less of an issue you're going to have with it. Yeah. That's definitely something about a small space. With that. that makes sense. That makes sense. And I guess that like applies to just the general layout as well. Like with the yeah. kitchen, um, sometimes people find that they haven't got space and then they move a cupboard like under the bed but it's for kitchen stuff and and it becomes like not as easy to like work out are there any things about the van space that you now that you've lived in it for a little bit do you feel like there's things that you'd love to adjust or change or are you okay at the moment yeah you always a project always got ideas I think anyone that with a van they'll they'll tell you it's never fully done yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually going to be redecorating um, I'm mm-hmm. building a new shelf this winter um, and repainting everything I think the thing for me I wish we had a ba- like, I wish we had a bathroom because yeah. well, it's another way to st- another place to store things um, but also it's just really handy to have like it's nice to have like a bathroom like go in brush it like that would be really cool but we yeah. just don't the right size van for it when you get your bus you can do that yeah when we get a bus we'll have, a few bathrooms. We'll have one upstairs one downstairs one yeah, yeah. Well, oh my gosh we could have a bath that'd be so good i've seen what? some fantastic baths in like tiny spaces i know yeah. amazing oh, ones that turn into seats as well i love something that can be two things so yeah you know when you've got like the um the box seats there's, yeah. I can't remember, I wish I could remember who it was off the top of my head, but they built like a double seat that was basically a rectangle, but inside it was like a bathtub I've and then that. the lid went on top and you could sit on it. Yeah, I've That's seen great. that. I've seen that couple. I can't remember what their name was, but I, I remember that bathtub. I love them. And it was all, I think it was cladded with wood on the outside. Yeah, it? beautiful, like yeah. log cabin sort of vibe. Yeah. It is like pretty special. Yeah, that would be quite cool. James, should we just put a bath in the middle? Right off the floor, swim to the bed. <laughs> Some people do do the pop-up ones, don't they? They get like a, it's almost like a, like a hula hoop. <laughs> and they get the yeah. towel and they hook it at the top of the ceiling. And then they have like a, you can get um, like dog baths as well that are longer. Mm-hmm. And then people use those, but put the, the shower curtain on the outside. So it keeps like the sides like protected and stuff. So good. Yeah, it's clever. We we are gonna look at we we are gonna look at attaching a shower to the back. Cool. Um, so that so you could open something. up the doors and have it on the back doors. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that's that's the current most likely option. Yeah. Um, because that way as well, don't have to worry too much about all the moisture, all the water mm. splashing around, or the yeah. condensation inside. That's the thing. Um, it's those. Are- it's those extra things, isn't it? Mm, definitely. What were you saying? Sorry, because was that you that said? Well, yeah, James, I interrupted you. You were saying um, about having those things because, like, when you've got like extra moisture and and like oh, yeah. all the mold and things. Yeah, so it's always a worry, especially you know, like we say with dogs and damp mm. towels, very on top of making sure it's not getting too damp in here yeah um so keep nice and warm loads of ventilation um and i, could, I think because we've got by this far if you can go throughout a summer yeah traveling as much as we have without a shower i think you can do a winter 
Yeah, that's a little easy. Yeah. I mean, I've showered in a bucket. Like, I'm not precious. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, definitely. It's just that nice luxury that you'd like to have one day. But like you yeah, say, having it, yeah. And then like you say, having it out the back of the doors is a way around it as well. I think yeah. a lot of people get a bit nervous about having it inside a space. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just a lot. Like it is a little bit, it, it would be a lot to build one, I think. Well, we kind of used up all the space inside, to be honest. So. Yeah, we yeah, had <laughs> that's if, it, even it. if it was like fold out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd have to start building down, but then you wouldn't yeah. be able to drive your van anywhere. No, <laughs> like exactly. one of those like uh, James Bond, like low bath tubs in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that one, is. that is definitely. Yeah, can we do that? Yeah, <laughs> you just won't be able to drive anywhere though. That's fine. We've got a little car. Just a mattress that just lifts <laughs> up, and just a bed, a bath underneath. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, can you have a bathtub on the roof? We could have a bathtub on the roof actually. <laughs> oh wait, we've got to. We've got to. Oh, so we basically have to give up electricity for a bath. I mean, that sounds all right. Oh yeah, <laughs> that would be perfect. <laughs> Uh, don't need solar panels. We just put a bath there. Yeah, we just put a bath there. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. You won't be able to like <laughs> electrify anything. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's fine. It's fine. All the birds will come on the bath side and we'll sing. It'll be like Snow White. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can put it now. It's lovely. <laughs> um, I always like to ask the community to um, choose a question to ask the guests on the podcast. And the question that they wanted to ask you was, what makes van life in the UK doable? I think what makes van life in the UK doable? I think just the beautiful places. The, the vast range of places that you can go mm. um yeah it's great great amounts to explore yeah and a nice community i think those two elements combined yeah the community right, really and well. then yeah absolutely yeah i would say it's like the yeah the vast wide spaces in the community like james said um and the support that you get mm. um for like whether it's meetups or anything like that i think it's definitely definitely is doable and desirable so yeah, especially throughout lockdown yeah i think it oh, can't go very far yeah um, so we managed to get to 12 out of the 15 uk national parks and exactly all sorts of exactly. that's so yeah. cool and it's you're right because the uk is relatively small compared to places in like mm-hmm. europe and, and overseas like it is more accessible isn't it like you can do it do you find that since lockdown that the whole sort of van life side of things um has become more of a thing yeah it's definitely i think it started really back in 2018 yeah uh we we we've had friends that have basically gone like years ago of built a van um and gone and traveled france we've had a couple of friends and we always you know dreamt about it but i think it definitely has become more of a thing and i think instagram in particular has made it more of a thing yeah because it looks so desirable yeah um, and i think it's so accessible you have all these resources now that you're able to that are able to tell you how to build a van or get a van and the prices have just in the, since lockdown tripled I think <gasps> oh they went insane didn't they they've gone absolutely yeah. insane because everyone's just like okay we've slowed down a little bit in life realized what's important and this is what's important and it's either spending time with your family your loved one whether it's you know trap like quenching your first for travel like yeah everyone's just priorities are completely different and I think van life does meet a lot of the like it kind of like mirrors and 
gels with all of those yeah Yeah. ticks all those elements of life doesn't it I think um do you find that in the UK it wasn't as much of a thing or do you think it's always been there just not as no like I know recently it's felt like on t on like our UK TV shows there's been loads of shows all of a sudden about like motorhomes and caravans and glamping and and things like that and they never used to come out before it's definitely become more popular yeah it has always been around to a certain extent yeah Yeah. but um like you say with your friends and things there's always been someone who's doing a trip sorry that was Denver (laughs) um yeah so it I guess like even originating from like Romney travelers and things like that I think that's where it sort of stem from so it's always been there this this way of life has always been there I think it's just definitely become more I would say yeah like glamorized to a certain extent yeah yeah maybe that's where social media plays a part yeah because there's there's some social media accounts that show everything and there's some social media accounts that choose to show sort of the glamorous side of it which is great to see like both sides um but yeah maybe and with like the tv and shows and things like that it's it is glamorizing it isn't it yeah, hundred yeah, hundred yeah, percent. It's more easily accessible to people, I think. Um, and but it, it definitely always has been a part, and and for some it was a a way of life. Um, and I yeah. think it's it's brilliant that a lot of people were able to do that. But I think it definitely at the same time it's like good to appreciate where it came from yeah. and who we should be thanking for sort of introducing this way of life who started it who's the inspiration for it basically yeah Um, yeah definitely because there's loads of people who've been doing that for a long time and they've just sort of been under the radar haven't they yeah yeah definitely um I would love to ask you a question that I ask all guests at the end of each podcast which is sustainability wise what do you wish that you or we had more of Hmm. what do we wish so on a completely like product wise from being yeah. in the van we go we have quite a lot of washing up liquid and one of my product ideas is a washing up liquid bar because a lot of bottles are used for washing up yeah. liquid bottles. we've got the the what's it eco the refill Ecover. yeah, yeah the, the refill yeah. But sometimes you run out in an inopportune moment you're not always able to get yeah. a refill yeah um, so because you know it's a small space you see you really see how much waste you can get through so you avoid you know, all your plastics and stuff as much as possible yeah but you you know you see how quickly a recycling bag or bin does fill up mm. across like a couple of weeks definitely and it's so interesting that you said that because you can get a shampoo bar and you can get a conditioner bar and a shower gel bar but I have never seen a general washing soap bar version. Exactly. And you could probably use like the, the shampoo or body wash or something as, as the same. But I just think it'd be... It'd be nice if there's one that you know for your dishes. Though. Yeah, that you know for, you, yeah. for your dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to go and grab the lemon, <laughs> lemon shampoo <laughs> bar. <laughs> you don't want to use the lemon shampoo bar that you've had on your armpits on your dishes. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, yeah, but, um, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking of a fresh new bar, but that's so true. <laughs> um, but yeah, like product wise, definitely say less plastic, 100%, yeah. more eco. Which I wish there was more of. But I wish there was more of. More or less plastic. More or less plastic, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I know what you mean. You wish that there was less plastic and more, yeah, more like e- plastic products. Yeah, I think we're getting we, Well, no, I don't actually think we're getting there. I think we're, we're, I think we're sort of like it's a long road and we're about a mile in. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be great to have loads more eco products. Um, and oh, vegan Yorkshire puddings that's my other thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah being able to get vegan Yorkshire pudding that's interesting my sister-in-law does gluten-free ones but yeah. I wonder if that would it depends what's in them doesn't it what they substitute. Hmm. but I want they're I want, hard 
I want some on the shelves. Do you know <laughs> Yeah, you want some that you could just yeah, grab. Like Auntie you Bessie. You can order them online. <laughs> you can order them online, but you can order them off online um, from a Mabel. There's a, a place called Mabel's Yorkshire Puddings, I think it is, that do vegan Yorkshire puddings. But I would like one that's really easily accessible. So that if I decide to have a roast at 2 p.m. on a Sunday, yeah. just do it easily. Yeah. But yeah, I want my vegan Yorkshire puddings. Do you have a freezer in your van? We don't even have a fridge. Oh, oh, you haven't got a fridge. So do you cook everything just fresh? You just buy it and have fresh, have fresh stuff. Everything's just done fresh. Yeah, it's all vegetables. Yeah, it's so all vegetables. It's so. fine to be kept out of the fridge, you know, wolf it down. And cut yeah, it oh, that makes well, life really easier. Oh, yeah. And it's cold outside, so like Jay, we uh, had some wine last night. Yeah. Leftovers of the curry, I just yeah. wrapped it up, left it outside. Fresh, yeah, fresh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah because great. what do you do with your milk? Do you get the um the like cupboard milk, the UHT milk? Um, so you don't well, have to worry about having that in the fridge. So we have oat milk. Yeah. Um, and our in like the bottom of our cupboards. So everywhere's really warm in the van, but in the bottom of our cupboards, it's really cold in there. Because ah. that sliding door on the other side, and that's so not, not insulated. Yeah, so it's not insulated. So it sort of yeah. keeps the little, little cool box mm. cupboard. Oh, cool. Put yeah, it in there. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's so, handy for people to know because if you've got like a cupboard, you could like that, like you say, where it's what? near that space, that's cool enough and it works. Yeah, it works perfectly. Like, we, I mean, we're seven months in, we haven't been ill yet. So. <laughs> no it definitely it definitely works and we like same with vegan cheese and things like that like that's been stored in there till the next day um fine. we usually eat with the next within the couple of days but yeah hummus like you don't yeah there's so many things that you can live without in a van yeah and i guess also because you don't have a fridge you're only getting the things that you need as well yeah which yeah, helps. especially because of space as well. So I can't go out and do a massive yeah. shops. I'd be kind of smart on it. And oh, yeah, like grains and pulses and yeah. rice pasta, all those dried goods, they're fine to store. Yeah. Um, I, I get a lot of like root veg, I suppose. Yeah. So that, that keeps and the dang tasty. Yeah, absolutely. Like tonight, we're having chili nachos. <gasps> oh, that sounds so yeah. nice. I might have to get some recipes from you guys. <laughs> We the veggie chili nachos that we do, how good are they? Yeah, you do the best chili. So good. Uh, so good. I'm the chili queen. James is the curry queen. Okay. I mean, yeah, absolutely. You can be the curry queen. I'll be the yes. chili queen. I love that. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to get that recipe from you guys. Um, before we go, I know that you were saying earlier that you like books. I don't know if you like doing reading and things as well, or if you're more into music, James. But I'd love to know what your books are, and if for you, James, you're not into books as much. If there's sort of music that you're really like loving listening to at the moment. So my favourite book of all time is Knots and Crosses by Mal Mallory Blackman. Um, it's because at 15, I rented the book from Manchester Library and I remember the whole Megabus home reading it and I just, it was the most beautiful thing. Like I think a book that can make you cry, laugh, like feel all these different emotions just from, it's what made me realise I wanted to be a writer. Oh, so, amazing. Knots and Crosses by... Mallory Black, Mallory, I can't even speak sometimes. Mallory, Mallory Black. Black, but it's hard that way. It's hard. That yeah, it's <laughs> hard. Yeah, brilliant book. Definitely, it's a series as well. I definitely recommend that. Oh, I love that recommendation. And yourself, James? I I do enjoy reading. I think I used to read a heck of a lot more. Lauren has a Kindle, so she goes yeah. through that a bunch. Um, and I think I only have a small selection of books in here um so i love i've got a few books by bernard cornwell i love the sort of um creative stories loosely based on history um yeah. and they're just so descriptive um and then yeah terry oh terry pratchett you gotta love <laughs> yeah. the uh bizarreties of that one um so yeah don't read quite as much as i used to 
those are the definitely the ones I sort of if I open a book I will then it would be those ones so focused on it yeah I have to like sink my way through it so I'm almost yeah. apprehensive of turning a page because I know I will instantly write off a few hours yeah but, I love that <laughs> so I'll make sure I got time yeah make sure you've got a cup of tea in hand and you're ready to just have the time to sit down and read I love that and have you guys got like a favorite song that you're loving at the moment oh that's a bit um, tough one it is really it is we, we listen to some of the same music but i'd say yeah. if we both went to put a song on they'd be very different yeah they are very... would they oh <laughs> yeah they, so we often on road trips will argue over song choices but back to back, yeah. one thing that we do listen to together and it is the most chilled vibe ever and if you're sort of like cooking or just spending like lying in bed and just spending some time is the sunday chill mix on bbc oh, okay cool amazing isn't it yeah chillest show chillest show yeah oh, on bbc always, sounds always have some good artists on that. yeah that that is one thing that we all listen to together mm. and we just love um i'm trying to think of a song at the moment that i'm i love kalani uh -huh. she's one of my favorite artists in the whole world um who would you say your favorite artist is complete mixture but it's almost like my music music taste changes every couple of couple of yes, months yes there's loads of people like that where it changes all the time or changes some people change like monthly and daily and like yeah they might be like yeah. be listening to one genre one minute and then a complete different one comes up on the same playlist 100 percent. i love that that's really cool oh well Lauren and James, thank you so much for chatting to me today. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you guys. Well, it was so nice You're to welcome. talk to you. Thank you so much Lovely for having to us. Meet you. Can't believe we were nervous, but now, yeah, you you definitely uh definitely made it more relaxed oh you're so welcome and for anyone who wants to find out a little bit more about yourselves um you've got your website which is www a yorkshiresoul.com but you've also got your instagram handle that has sort of your van big blue and sort of your yeah. lifestyle on there and james's photography on there which is stunning which is at a yorkshire soul with an underscore on the end is that right yes my instagram got hacked a, a year ago so had oh. to have got the underscore on <laughs> oh well, thank you so much for joining me thank you so much for having us